afternoon, everybody. It is uh, the 28th of July, 2013. Hail Mary to all of you. And today we're going to continue on um, with something you guys can call the sequel. Because last time we talked about demonic possession. This time we're going to talk about the angelic. The angelic forces um, and the demonic forces can sometimes get a little confusing because they can work the same way, use the same strategies, and basically sometimes you have to kind of figure out who's who. So let's just start by looking at the facts if we can. Now, we know that the demonic forces, as I said before, are out to destroy human beings. They're, they don't like us because we are children of the light. And, speaking of the light, um, there we go. Um, and they are, of course, children of the light. And so, because we are children of the god and the goddess, and not children of the dark entities, they see us as not something that they want to be dealing with. Um, you have to understand, first of all, that there is a, um, a battle going on. It's mentioned in the book of Revelation. It's mentioned by Enoch. It is mentioned by many people, both contemporary and historical figures, who have talked about this battle of good versus evil. So it's not really a new thing. However, um, I think a lot of people sometimes can then to get the impression that these people are um, talking about the angelic, they're all good and all great, all wonderful. That depends. That's that's relative. Depends on if you're dark entity, the dark souled entity or late souled entity. Um, if you're dark souled, the dark souls will tend to leave you alone, and more likely agree to help you to destroy, to destroy the white-souled ones. Um, if you're a light-souled entity, the dark souls don't want you there, and they're going to do everything they can to put you out of your misery. And, of course, they'll use, white, they'll use uh, human um, counterparts to do the same thing to help make the work possible to destroy you in the form of murder. Um, uh, violent acts of violence, um, you know, name taunting, whatever it takes, they'll try it to get rid of the white sold ones. But today we're going to be talking about the other side of the forces, and that's the angelic beings. Now, these are the ones that work with Mother and Father God. These are the creatures that work with us, not trying to override us, but work with us to um, watch over us and to provide for our well-being. Um, the white beings, if you're going to call them that, they are beings. They are not people. Okay, Angels are not of the same species as humans, okay? They are they are different species completely. They're still created by Mother and Father God, and there is about, there's like several subgroups of them. So let me just break this down very quickly into the ones that you probably will run into on a daily basis. Um, cherubim, seraphim, um... Spirit guides, thrones, principalities um, are the major ones. So let's um, take a look at this real quick here. The cherubim are almost always referred to by people as the cherubs. The little guys, the little cute ones, the little baby face ones. So first of all, they're not baby face. And second of all, they are certainly very important. They are intelligent beings. They work with Mother and Father God. And they are often used on the other side as messengers and as um, um, for communications and for delivering of information and objects. They are not little children. They are adults. Okay? Um, 
another angel is the seraphim. So these guys work with... These guys are a lot bigger than you think they are. <laughs> um, they are part of the protective force of Father God. These guys also um, work with, you know, God we're directly. We've got Gabriel, Raphael. We have um, many of the archangels are seraphim. So the Archangel Michael is a seraphim. These guys are not no small guys. These guys are big, they're strong, and they really know their stuff. Um, and they work with primarily with Father God, but they do have um, um, some active interest in Mother God as well. Now, then we have the two subcategories of both. One of them is called the principalities, the other ones are called the thrones. Um, the principalities are Father God's um, crew. They're his, like, his staff, his secretaries. Um, Angel Michael is in this category. Um, they are um, focusing on protecting people from the dark side. And if that sounds like something from Star Wars, I am very sorry. <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny here. I'm trying to be um, sincere about something that is a little complicated. So, basically, Archangel Michael is a principality, and he is um, very highly respected by Father Yahweh. And Mother Asna has her thrones. We don't hear much about her thrones, but um, their jobs are to, again, make sure to protect the human beings and to keep them out of trouble. Now, Mother is more actively concerned about the social and emotional aspects of things, whereas Father Yahweh is more concerned about protecting um, humanity from the dark entities. So we have a, clearly a very different way of seeing things. Um, so when Mother Mother Asna also has gives you a spirit, uh, gives you a guardian angel. This is Father Yahweh. They both agree to it. A guardian angel is not just that voice in your head. That guardian angel's job is to protect you at all costs. They do this because they know that everybody needs a little bodyguard now and then. It's just like the Western Union commercial says, everyone needs a little help sometimes. And that certainly includes protecting yourself against the bad guys. You certainly got their forces of darkness as well, and they are getting more and more belligerent as we go, because right now they're losing um, the battle against good. Okay, but that's where you know that. It says that in the book of Revelation that this would happen, that the battle between Jesus and Archangel Michael and all this and against Satan and his minions. Um, but it's a little different to talk about this and actually say it doesn't mean anything when it does. Because the dark entities are out there specifically aiming to see as many of Mother Us and Father Yahweh's people fall before the final battle um, between um, the forces of darkness and the forces of light, led by Archangel Michael and his team, and of course. Now, where's Mother Asna going to be in this battle? Is she going to be involved or not? Now, actually, Mother will be more of watching um, the battle from the sidelines, but she also will be making sure that her thrones are there, working extra hard to make sure that people will not fall to the dark side, which will turn up the pressure big time to try to get more people to fall to the dark side. We never talked about that. Michelle wrote a document many years ago about this. And even 
Sylvia Brown did mention the same topic, which is funny because Michelle wrote that document back in high school and um, before she even knew Sylvia Brown's writing. Um, but the thing was, we talked about the light, the circle of light and the circle of darkness. Um, the problem was, is that Michelle first saw the circle like a bullseye. That is, innermost circle is bright white. And then you have the of slowly degrees of darkness where the, the blackest of blackest is in the outermost ring. That's just not the way it works, but it's a nice try. Um I think it was a I think it was a good point to bring up that mother and father God are trying to keep people safe. But because we know that things that are forbidden or bad for us sometimes seem so exciting. People mistakenly choose to do these bad things anyway. How about you, for example? I mean, let me just talk about this on a human level, and then I think we can understand what we're talking about here. Okay? You ever thought about smoking cigarettes or drinking alcohol? Even though, for example, you know, cigarettes can give you lung cancer and emphysema and because you think it's so cool to put a burning piece of paper and tobacco in your mouth. Do you ever think it would be so cool to open a beer can and get smashed and then walk around like an asshole for all day long? For the sin, wages of sin or death, right? That's what it says. I think of St. Paul, St. John, um, yeah, St. Paul has said that. But the truth of the matter is, is that Mother Asna and Father Yahweh will allow you to make those mistakes because they want you to learn from them. But if after so long you haven't learned nothing, even though you got to hang over the next day and your head feels like someone wrapped you, been pounding on you with his with a 50 pound sledgehammer and you're kissing the porcelain throne and puking your guts up and you still think it's cool and you go back and drink more alcohol and you still like that um, and you're destroying your body and your liver in the process if mother God and father God feel that you really have blew it they're going to find ways to make sure you get the message, 10-4. <laughs> In other words, they're going to make sure that you understand the point of the, why it is wrong to do what you're doing. And if you still can't get it, if you're still too dense, then, well, they always can come home and start over again and um, maybe get it right the second time. Even if you had to go home with a destroyed liver and uh, or you know bad heart health and all that, but the point is, is that you know we have to understand that we also have a free will. Now this gets complicated because I was watching Morgan Freeman about the free will and Michelle, and I kind of got uh, like I wasn't sure how that worked. I mean, they one physicist was trying to say that. Our future will determine our past choices. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. How can our future make our past choices, make our decisions for our past choices? Well, anyway, I'm not going to go into all the details. Put it this way, it was a head-splitting exercise, and it turns out that it's a lot more complicated than I'm going to go into right now for this point. But what I'm trying to get at is, is that Mother Us and Father Yahweh's Teams are trying to help you stay away from the dark side and to keep you out of trouble. But sometimes we human beings need to sit there and ask them for a guidance and support. Unlike the dark forces, they do not come into our lives involuntary. They do not sit there and try to seize control. They want you to welcome them in to your lives. And, and that's the important piece. That's a very big difference. I mean, 
it's it's your choice. It's it's your will. You can choose which way you're gonna go. But for me and for Michelle and for everybody that we know, we prefer to be with the light side than the dark side. So maybe we have to ask you this question. Because I wanna get ready to wrap this up. What side are you on and why? Why have you chosen the side that you're on? Do you work with Yahweh in Mother Asna and serve the good? Or do you work with the evils and the dark entities and do bad? It's a good question. Put your comments below and we will discuss it. Okay? I'm, I'm Lumi Ann for the show and uh, I'm going to let you go. And uh, don't forget, watch my channel always not to new stuff and please don't forget to subscribe it is easy it's http colon forward slash forward slash www dot tiny url that's t-i-n-y url dot com forward slash l-u-m-i-f-i-n-i-s-t-r-a and of course my email is l-u-m-i-f-i-n-i-s-t-r-a at gmail dot com I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.